Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and to another video. I'm sure that we all complain about the coach of our favorite NBA teams from time to time, but they mostly deserve to be in the position that they are in today. But there are some which I just feel bad for the fans, as no matter how good the team is, the coaches just ruin it all. And today, we're going to be looking at the worst coaches in the NBA this season. At number 6 is Dwayne Casey. Coming into his last season with the Raptors, everybody thought that Dwayne Casey was a really good coach. Then he got fired out of the blue, and everyone was on the Raptors' butts for firing him. If you have a friend that's a Pistons fan, give him a hug. At number 5 is Mike Brown. Mike Brown has got to be one of the worst coaches in the league, and I'm surprised that this dude has a job in the NBA again. He had a job in Cleveland, but just got carried the whole time by LeBron, and probably was a reason why the Cavs never got a ring in the first LeBron era. He just has this inability to make any progress with any of his players on any team. In LeBron's first stint with the Cavs, some of the lack of help was the front office's fault, but Brown was never able to develop any capable talent, and the best player that he was able to construct was Anderson Verjao. The Kings are 8-6 right now, but I don't see that hanging on for much longer. At number 4 is Tom Thibodeau. Tom Thibodeau has to be in the top 5. He's a very good coach at the beginning of seasons, I'll say that. But by the end of the year, he always looks like one of the worst. He's never been able to sustain success out of his most recent teams when it comes down to the end. He always puts his players to the end and plays his best almost the whole game and doesn't utilize the bench as much as he should. Like the time he ran Derrick Rose into the ground in the playoffs, the game was over when Rose got hurt. Why was he in? And he just always leads to horrible Januaries and Februarys. He also just refuses to play any young talent, it seems. Like, whenever I watch this Knicks team, it always seems that Obi Topin is someone that stands out as a good player. He's very natural, and he's a good offensive player and a solid defender. He should be getting a lot more minutes than he usually does. He also is just not a great leader of men at times, because part of the reason that he fell out with the Timberwolves is because he had a fallout with the locker room, and players didn't seem to like him a whole lot. We all know that the Jimmy Butler situation that occurred, and he's not a good coach if you're trying to win a championship. He's also a Doc Rivers disciple, if that tells you anything. At number three is Steven Silas. For the third worst coach in the NBA, gotta go with Silas. I can't go at his resume as a coach too much, as he's only been a coach for two years, but I just don't like what I've seen in his rotations last year as well as this year. This year, the rotations have been all right, but they're just playing a lot of their young guys. I'd like to see Josh Christopher playing a little bit more as he saw some success last year, but outside of that, I can't hate too much this year. But last year was awful. Before the Schroeder trade, he was starting Daniel Tice over Alperin Sangoon. This just makes no sense as they were a tanking team last season and it would have benefited from getting a young and talented center more minutes on the court. It also seems like the Rockets have little play design on offense and there just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of sets that they run, and they just end up taking a lot of contested shots, which some falls on the players, but it also falls on the coaching as well. Now, if we're being honest, he hasn't been dealt the very best hand, but his teams have been not just awful, but atrocious, as he's not led them to more than 20 wins in a season, which I can't defend. You have NBA talent as the front office, and just gave KPJ a bag, got Jalen Green, as well as up-and-coming Sangoon who looks like a stud, you should be able to win more than 20 games in a season. And this year, again, they're not on pace to get past that. I'll admit he was set up for failure with this team, but he hasn't helped his case too much either, and hopefully he can do better in the future with some better draft picks. At number two is Steve Nash. Look, I know that Nash has been fired, but man, he is just not a good coach. With the Nets and their team capabilities, they should be able to make it past the second round in these last two years. Part of being a good coach is the ability to develop and find roles for players outside your stars, which coaches like Eric Spolstra and Taylor Jenkins have been able to do very well. Outside of Cam Thomas, he has been unable to coach any young talent well, as De'Ron Sharp has shown no improvement, and Nick Claxton, who is supposed to be a breakout candidate the past couple of years, has failed. Some of it definitely falls on the players, but some of it comes down to coaching as well. His defensive scheming is just not great as well as having terrible defense as they were down 20th in defensive rating last year. He also failed to win over the locker room ever and seems to let the players walk all over him as he was unable to ever get everyone on the team on the same page. And at number one is Doc Rivers. 
All right, worst coach in the league. I may get some hate, but I don't care. Worst coach has to go to Doc Rivers. And don't come at me for what he did with the Celtics. I put that finals victory on the players as they had three Hall of Famers and great role players to fill out the team. Because afterwards, he has proven that he's not a great coach and that Celtics ring is just carrying his career when it wasn't him in the first place. I'm going to touch on two things with him, how he can't control a locker room and how he can't make any adjustments as he might be one of the worst playoff coaches of all time. For controlling the locker room, it just seems to be a weakness of his even dating back to the Celtics days. There always seems to be some beef in his locker rooms. With the Celtics, there was the whole weird Rondo and Allen beef, and then with the Clippers, there was the CP3 and Blake beef. And just last year with the Sixers, there was Ben Simmons and the rest of the team beef. If it just happened with one team, sure, but it's happened three straight times now, and there must be a recurring theme. For the adjustments, he may be able to have you win in a first game, but over the course of a series, he hasn't made it past the second round since 2012. There's a reason these teams hire and then fire him. And there's a lot of recent playoff fail moments, as the Hawks series two years ago now, they blew multiple 20-point leads, as he just doesn't make any halftime adjustments and allows the same things to happen over and over and over again. He did it again during the COVID season too, as the Clippers blew a 3-1 lead to the Nuggets and blew a huge lead as well as in Game 7 of that series. He also is just not good at scheming as a coach, and this year with the Sixers, it just seems like it's either let Harden work at the top of the key or let Joel work down low. There doesn't seem to be any ball movement, and he's just relying on his stars to get the work done, which eh, they probably will, but come postseason time, that's just not going to work against players that are as good as yours. I just feel bad for the 76 again for tuning in, and we'll see you all in the next one.